Thank you for joining us today. My name is Dr. Megan Starolis, and I'm an infectious disease specialist at Quest Diagnostics. At Quest, we're dedicated to our HIV community and improving our testing for our clinicians and our patients. We're very excited about our new test launch um, based on some uh, unmet needs that we've heard from our healthcare providers and from our patients. We're here today with Dr. Gina Simonzini, and she's gonna talk about some of the advances that we've had in our PrEP or pre-exposure prophylaxis testing. Dr. Simonzini, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, I'm Gina Simonzini, I'm a physician, I'm an associate professor of clinical medicine, and I am the deputy director of our HIV program. So for those who don't know, can you explain what PrEP is and who it's for? Sure, so PrEP is pre-exposure prophylaxis, which is an HIV prevention tool. And so to get PrEP, you basically have to go and see a physician or a clinician to get screened for um, eligibility for it. And so PrEP is prescribed by a clinician and uh, it's a medication that's best taken once a day, every day, to really fully protect against HIV. And so if patients take this medication every day as they're supposed to, it'll protect about 90% of the time. So the CDC recommends different groups of patients are eligible for uh, PrEP, men who have sex with men, heterosexually active men and women, people who inject drugs. Generally those who have had a recent bacterial STI, so like gonorrhea um, or syphilis, those that um, are involved in, in commercial sex work, those who don't routinely use condoms, and so that's a huge group of people that I think um, we we really need to get good sexual histories about so that we can definitely target um, treatment and prevention for them. So how have you seen PrEP change the HIV discussion over the last few years? Yeah, so PrEP's a really big deal in the HIV prevention world. So, you know, since PrEP came out, which is a, it was approved by the FDA in about 2012, and then we had our first guidelines in 2014, and um, we've really seen a huge uptake in PrEP use in the last, you know, five years or so. At the same time, we've also seen, as PrEP uptake's gone up, we've also seen transmissions go down. So from 2008 to 2015, we've seen a reduction in HIV infections incidents, HIV incidents, by about 18%. We're seeing, when you break it down by state, the states that have the most PrEP uptake actually have a reduction of HIV infections by close to 5%. Whereas on the flip side, the states that are not having very high uptake of PrEP almost have an increase increase of HIV by close to 1%. But there's still a lot more that we could be doing to help to impact HIV. We certainly need to expand PrEP access to all people. Right now, about 95% of users are men, and we also need to reach more people of color. Only 5% of women in the U.S. have gotten PrEP, and I think that that's really something that we need to work on for women so that we can get them to understand that this is something that they can use to empower themselves to protect themselves. Um, a lot of times men put condoms on, but women um, are only able to pregnancy prevent with birth control. Now they can also HIV prevent with PrEP. For a patient who's on PrEP, can you describe the process for treatment? Yeah, so generally when a patient comes in for a PrEP visit, it's a, usually a pretty long visit that's just dedicated towards PrEP because it is a lot of counseling, a lot of information that I need so that I can really tailor the therapy towards that person. And so what I mean by that is, you know, a lot of times when patients coming are coming in, they're healthy individuals, they may not be used to taking medicines on a regular basis. So we talk a lot about adherence and how good you can be taking medications every day day. I do a lot of counseling to make sure that patients know this medication has to be taken on a regular basis. We talk about sex a lot. This is um, something that's important, I think, to kind of reassess routinely because patients' sex lives change throughout their throughout seasons, throughout lives, and so it's really important to know with whom they're having sex. So is it with men, women, or both? Um, and then are they using condoms consistently when they have sex? Um, because if they're not, then that's something that we may want to talk about more or we may want to talk about other risk reductions that we can employ to help to improve their HIV transmission risk. So that's a lot of the adherence and the counseling. And then um, we talk about monitoring and things that we need to do at baseline. 
So generally baseline, we have to do an HIV test. And so the test that I generally get at baseline, which is also recommended by CDC, is the combined antigen and antibody test. It has a much shorter window so that we can be more confident that a person's not living with HIV when we prescribe PrEP. And so obviously we wanna make sure that if a person starts PrEP for uh, prevention from HIV, but also has chronic hepatitis B, they don't go on and off PrEP, which could flare hepatitis. So then in addition to those you know, baseline tests, we also do sexually transmitted infection testing. And you know, that testing that we do, I also really encourage primary care providers to make sure we test every single area that a person could be using to have sex. So how does the testing change after the initial baseline and the treatment is ongoing? So I think the way that um, I look at doing monitoring for uh, patients that are on PrEP, it's really making sure that I'm looking at their risk reduction. So for me, and this is what the CDC most recently updated, is to do sexually transmitted infection screening on an every three to six month basis. Obviously, if someone's not as sexually active, you could space it out to six months. If somebody is more sexually active, do it every three months. Um, we also talked in, in the beginning about monitoring creatinine clearance. And so the CDC recommends at three months to do a follow-up creatinine clearance, and then thereafter every six months unless a person has renal dysfunction. So I, have, I practice in an area that has a lot of concomitant diabetes and hypertension. So that for that patient, I might do their creatinine clearances every three months instead of every three and then six months. Um, and then really what's most important to do every time we see a patient is to do an HIV test. And again, that's the fourth generation testing that is done unless a person supports some kind of information about perhaps having acute HIV. For women who are taking PrEP, we really should be looking at pregnancy tests every three months too. So that'll be really helpful because even us talking about it, I forgot one test. So it'll be great that Quest can you know, put that all together in a panel for us. Right. And one way that Quest has tried to help with all of these different types of testing required is to have different panels for males or females and for different baseline and then different time intervals as well. So all the different tests can be performed from one simple blood and urine collection no need for different test codes. All, you can do all of them from um, that one collection and one test code. Do doctors find it hard to remember all the different things they need to test for? Yeah, I think definitely, especially because there are different tests at baseline and then there are different tests at three and six months. So I, I definitely think it can be a challenge. Um, and we know that there are a lot of primary care providers who are not prescribing PrEP right now, and I'm sure that this is you know, a complicated matter for them. So do you want to tell us more about what Quest is doing about their new PrEP panel? Right, well with the PrEP panel that Quest has developed, it's meant to be a one-stop shop where you can have one simple blood and urine collection and get all the testing that is recommended on the CDC algorithm all with one lab. Oh, that'll help so much. It'll be so much more efficient than having to find all the right labs all the time. So I'm sure that it'll be much more efficient in the visit, but then probably also make it easier on clinicians right. to get all the right information they need the first time. Right. I certainly think that in a busy day when you're a clinician or primary care provider, that these are certainly things that are easy to forget. You know, like I forgot the urine pregnancy test, you know, or to forget to make sure that you get the the creatinine clearance. I think it's gonna be really helpful to just act as a reminder to some clinicians, but also help clinicians to feel a little bit more comfortable with prescribing, especially if this is you know, a new thing for them. Because I really do think that you know, PrEP prescribing and HIV prevention is something that primary care providers can do. So with this new PrEP panel that Quest is offering, can I order more tests and like can I, you know, select a gonorrhea and chlamydia test for like the throat and for the rectum because like I said, it's really important that we test in all those different sites. Of course, the great thing about Quest is that we have a very comprehensive test menu. So um, like you said, for certain patient populations, it may be very important to test different anatomical sites. Yeah. So in addition to the PrEP panel, you can collect from those different sites and then just order with the appropriate test codes. In addition to all of the tests being organized in a nice area for clinicians, are there any other benefits to using the PrEP panel from Quest? The reporting is a huge benefit for clinicians. So every time you order the PrEP panel, you're not going to have your results fragmented or having to hunt for your different results. Your HIV screening is going to be right at the top and then you're going to have all your other results right there for you. 
and then hopefully there will be bolding or something so that it draws the attention to the clinician so that we can pay attention to it a little bit more closely. Right, anything abnormal is gonna be flagged and where appropriate, you're gonna have interpretive messages. Megan, this Quest prep panel sounds great. Since it's new and it's new to market, does that mean that we're gonna have problems with insurance? So insurance coverage always varies by plan, payer, and even at the patient level. However, we expect the same amount of coverage that we do for the panel as we do for the individual components, which overall is very favorable. Oh, that's good. Can you tell me a little bit more about how um, this can affect the healthcare providers in a primary care setting? You know, I think it's a barrier for patients to have to go to see a specialist when they're trying to prevent HIV, especially because there can be long wait times at different areas of the United States to see a specialist where they just might not exist within, you know, a reasonable drive. And I feel like that that's, you know, really difficult for a lot of um, patients to kind of have to handle. And then. I obviously think that primary care providers fill a lot of gaps um, and sometimes it is difficult to stay on top of all of this new stuff, especially when there's new guidelines that are coming out every so often that they may not see because it's you know a somewhat specialized area with HIV prevention. So it's helpful that Quest is making it more simple for clinicians. So you've talked about testing at three month intervals. Do you actually see the patient every three months? Generally when we have patients start on PrEP, that first time that I start them on PrEP, I'll usually have them come back in about a month just to check in with them, see how they're doing, talk to them about any side effects, talk to them about their adherence, how often they're taking the medication, talk to them about their sex life, their sex partners, have things changed since the last time we met. But routinely I see patients at the first month and then after that I space it out to every three months. And you know, the CDC recommends not prescribe uh, medication for PrEP more than three months at a time because we really want patients to come in and get routine monitoring to make sure they're not seroconverting at the time that they're on PrEP. We really need to do every three month testing, especially for HIV. So thank you, Dr. Simon Zini, for coming today and talking to us about PrEP. Thanks for having me.